Hi, I'm Jonas from Eclipse Source, and in this short video, I would like to show you a concept called Task Context. It's a simple but very powerful concept that will boost your efficiency when using AI uh, assistance for coding or AI agents. We got very positive uh, feedback from developers. They use it for over 50% or even more of their task, and are really happy with it. So let's directly dive into the demonstration. All right, I'm in my IDE now. I'm using the Thea IDE, which is a fully open source uh, AI native IDE that you can download and install for free. You can connect it to any LLM of your choice, including self-hosted and local ones. Um, the main reason I'm using this for the demonstration is that the Thea IDE has native support for using task context. Uh, you can do similar things in any other popular AI coding um, environment too. All right, so what are task contexts about? When you work with AI in, in your IDE, many of us use a chat for that, right? The chat is next to my coding environment, and then I can write some requirements, some bug fixes or whatever. And then there are some agents that suggest changes to my workspace or directly apply them. And how does it work? Let me just demonstrate that. Um, the code base that I'm currently working in is a fairly large one. Um, that's the code base of the IDE itself. So I'm using the IDE to change the IDE, but that doesn't really matter for the demonstration. That's just an example. So let me just uh, do what many of us do. So I type something here. Uh, I use the coder agent, the coder agent, and I type some requirement, for example, add a reset button to the token usage view. And just for understanding, so we have a token usage view here um, and currently doesn't have a reset button. And that's what I would like to add. All right, so let's just press enter. <clears throat> and now the agent will analyze my workspace. Um, it will try to find the right files and apply changes. Now, what's wrong with that? Actually, there's nothing wrong if this goes uh, right and I, I don't have to apply much changes. However, if it doesn't get the requirements 100% uh, the first time, or for example, it doesn't find the right context, or for example, if my prompt is not super precise, you might know this, then you write another message, another message and so on. And sooner or later, it feels a little bit like we are developing uh, with a chat group, right? It's, it's, it's not super structured what we do here. Now, let's do it differently. And let me stop that here, because that's actually what task context about, are about. So instead of writing the initial prompt right in this chat, what I do is um, I create a file for this prompt. Um, and we have a directory here called task context, and I create, create a new file here called, for example, my task. So MD, just like this. And now <clears throat> let me just paste the initial prompt that I've used. It's very simple uh, in here. And now what I can do instead of uh, copying that over, I can use a command uh, task context initiate session. That's a currently open file. And then I can select the agent. Basically, I've just to hit enter. And now we can see over here that the chat is initialized with this file, right? So if I close this again and click here, this is a reference to this file. And now I can just hit enter here, right? Now this will do exactly the same thing um, as I did before, but now I have externalized my prompt into a file. It wouldn't make sense for this very simple example, but the nice thing is now uh, I have a re reproducible prompt that I can refine even before I would send it to the LLM, all right? Now, um, as mentioned, this example is too simple to justify the concept. So let me do a uh, more complex example to show you the real power. All right, I've reset my IDE to a fresh state. So how can we really make use of this? Um, the first key is to not directly send the prompt to the coding agent, but actually use a agent that is good at planning before so doing so. Um, and let me directly trigger that. So I use the same prompt um, as I used before, but this time I use another agent in the Thea ID, that's the architect. Um, and the purpose of this agent is to analyze a problem. It also has access to the workspace, so it can also look at the code. But instead of directly suggesting code, it will create a plan what should be coded. Now, you might think, okay, this is overly complicated, um, but if you used AI agents for coding before, you might experience um, the time that you actually really spend is not so much on coding anymore because the code is actually generated, but on reviewing and debugging the result. And um, this is actually over often underestimated how much time we then actually spend in reviewing the generated code. So the more precise and the better we can write our initial prompt with more details, more context and so on, the better uh, the result will be. And 
the better the result, the less time we actually spend in fixing something or reviewing the code. Um, and of course, it depends on the complexity of the feature, whether this is actually worth it. But we have experienced for many features is actually worth the extra round to get an impression on what the LLM wants to do before we actually let it do that. All right, so we can see here um, for, for this uh, requirement, it has now created a plan um, that is currently in the chat. Um, this video is about task context. So how do we get this into a task context? And the nice thing is, um, because Thea IDE supports this concept natively, we have a button down here that says, summarize this session as a task for coder. And if we press this, we see here, uh, there's a progress bar. What we do now is we send the result from architect um, to an underlying LLM again, um, and let it summarize the plan here in a, a specific format. You can influence this format because as all prompts in the Thea IDE, they're completely open and you can modify them as a user, but this is the standard form. Now let's look at that. Um, so we can see here, um, it describes the problem, it describes the scope, it describes the design and implementation very much in detail. Um, so it knows all the files now, and we could now as a developer check whether this is what we actually want. Um, not only that, it also describes uh, a testing strategy. So uh, what tests do, does it want to generate? Um, and also a manual testing strategy. Now this would be very useful if we want to manually test the feature later on. Um, and of course, we can also use this information, um, for example, with a new app tester agent in the Thea IDE that can automatically test the feature. And even more, we have deliverables. And what's very nice, once we're done with our feature, we already have a PR description for the pull request. And this works very nicely. At the end, we can basically just generate the PR, uh, for example, using the GitHub MCP server completely automatically. Right. So this is a very, very nice plan. And now I'm um, just in this example, um, just to show you that um, I could now just hit enter again. But if I review that, I would actually find out um, that the plan is now really to create a button. Now in this specific example, um, this is actually not really what I want. Um, instead, I would rather have a toolbar item. This is really specific for this example, but this is a typical change that you might discover if you just read that quickly as a developer. So let me quickly fix that. So what I do is I go to the architect session again and say, um, I want a toolbar item, not a button, right? Now, this is a typical example. If I would have a task coder already to generate the code, I need to review the code and find out, okay, it created a button. And then I already lost a lot of time because it generated all the code. On this level, on this high level, it's very easy for me to identify these kind of mistakes and fix them even before I run an agent that, for example, runs tests and, and so on. So I, I lose much less time. All right, it's done updating the plan. So let's quickly check that. And we can see down here, um, it now uses a toolbar item and a command, which is the, the way that I want it to work. Now, how can I now update my task context? I've, of course, I could manually do that, of course, because this is just a file, um, but there is also an action to do that explicitly. So I can press here. And now what happens under the hood is <clears throat> similar. So we send um, again, the updated chat session here the original task plan, and we asked the LLM, okay, could you please update uh, whatever changed? And in a second, I will be able to review that. Um, so I have full control over my task on it. It's really now a structured artifact um, that I can use for managing my task, right? And I see here, yeah, it's a toolbar item, not a reset button and a couple of other changes. Let me just accept that. Uh, and now I have an updated task session. And then ultimately, of course, I can now uh, trigger um, another coding session with exactly this and boom, um, my coding agent now implements this feature uh, that I've reviewed before and uh, I will get a much better result now because I've actually looked at the details before a task coder. All right, um, with that, I would like to close the demonstration. I hope you found this video interesting and are curious to try the concept of task context yourself. As mentioned before, you can download the Thea IDE that you used for the demonstration for free. Um, I've put the link down in the, in the description. Um, we got really 
very good feedback from developers about this concept. It really helps to structure the work with AI. And uh, you have a lot of additional benefits, like, for example, the testing information, the PR information. And you can even hand over these task context files to colleague. Like, for example, one person can prepare them, another one can write them. Last but not least, task contexts are also a perfect input for autonomous agents, like the new agent mode we've in the Thea ID or any other autonomous AI agent, because they really contain all the context that the fully autonomous agent needs to fully do the job if you if you add all the details there. All right, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting news about AI coding tools.